Hello everybody and welcome to the second video of my elemental extraction series. Today we're going to be talking about helium. Helium is another gas just like hydrogen that is invisible, so samples of it are fairly boring. Um, my sample here was gathered from an extremely high purity helium tank that uh, somebody at work let me borrow and basically I dispensed the helium into this upside down since helium is lighter than air and then I plugged the end of it and then brought it home and flame sealed it to seal it in permanently. But there's a much easier way to get helium of course and that's at your local party supply store. So you can get helium balloons just about anywhere. And these things are filled with uh, balloon grade helium is what it's called. So not anywhere near the purity of what's in this ampule. But uh, it's, it's good enough for most uses. I mean it floats and that's the purpose of it. And another use for helium that I'm sure most people know about is that you can breathe it. And when you breathe helium, it makes your voice a little bit higher. <laughs> helium does this because it's six times lighter than air, and it actually changes the speed of sound of the air that's coming out of your lungs. And that changes the resonant frequency of the frequencies coming out of your mouth, which amplifies the higher frequencies, and so you hear a higher pitch. <laughs> Helium is actually very similar to hydrogen in a number of ways. They're both invisible gases, they're both lighter than air, and they're both used to uh, inflate balloons as, as a lifting gas. Uh, and eventually, of course, they realized that hydrogen being flammable is not ideal for inflating a giant balloon with, so they changed over to helium. And uh, helium does not support combustion. So let's test that out. So I've got a uh, big test tube here, and uh, we'll try to fill this up with uh, helium from the balloon. I mean, this is going to be a little tricky to do on camera. All right, now that we've got our vial filled with helium, let's try a gas test on it. So we'll take a splint and light that and then immerse that into the gas and we'll see what happens to it. Oh, look at that. It's still burned. So that's a pretty interesting result and that actually proves something that I'd heard about this balloon grade helium and that's that they add oxygen to it. So they get pure helium and they intentionally add oxygen to it. And that's there because people are inevitably going to breathe this stuff and it's not great for you. So if it was pure helium, there would be no oxygen there at all. And so that could be, that could lead to asphyxiation. So they add this oxygen to help prevent that. You know, it's still not a great idea to breathe helium for very long, but it at least has some oxygen in it. So that's a good thing. But for an element collection, that's not a good thing. So I have an idea on a way that we can remove the extra oxygen from this balloon helium and hopefully end up with a uh, reasonably pure helium gas for an element sample. Oh, and there's one more really interesting factoid. You know, helium is so much lighter than air that once it gets released into the atmosphere, it eventually just goes straight up and escapes into space. It completely escapes the pole of Earth's gravity. So if that's the case, how do we have any helium at all? Well, they, they actually get helium from a byproduct of refining natural gas. So down underground in caves and stuff, when they're pulling out you know, methane and natural gas, whatever else is down there, there's some helium mixed in. So they separate that out and uh, you have your helium. But how did it get down there in the first place? Well, it, it turns out that helium, all the helium on Earth, is actually the result of radioactive decay. So every atom of helium that we have on the entire planet is basically a retired alpha particle. Alpha decay is one type of radioactive decay which emits a helium nucleus. And there's a lot of radioactive elements down in the Earth's core. That's why it's warm, it's from radioactive decay. And uh, when a helium nucleus, an alpha particle, is emitted, it goes a certain distance, but eventually it'll hit some rock and it gets stopped in the rock and it picks up electrons from around it to form an actual helium atom. Uh, so I, I think that's pretty amazing that this element is entirely the result of radioactive decay. So as I said before, the intent of this experiment is to remove the oxygen from this party balloon grade helium and leave us with relatively pure helium gas. 
So to do that, I'm going to use a setup that's similar to another experiment that removes oxygen from a sample of air by passing it between two syringes and overheated copper metal in a tube that connects the two. And you'll see it in a minute. Uh, instead of air, though, I'll be using my balloon-grade helium in an attempt to purify it of that oxygen they added in. Okay, now I've got the setup filled with helium, and we're ready to start the experiment. So let me zoom in for you a little bit, but we've got 50 milliliters of helium in this syringe, which is attached to a three-way stopcock, which is currently closed, and that goes to a glass tube that's filled with little bits of copper, which is connected to the other three-way stopcock, also closed, and the other 50 milliliter syringe. And what's going to happen is we're going to heat this copper using my little butane burner from below. And the hot copper is going to react with any oxygen that might be in the helium. And it should turn black. All right, I lowered the setup a little bit so it's a bit closer to the burner. So let's get this started. So first of all, turn on the burner. And start warming up the copper. And then we'll open one of the stopcocks. Actually, I'm going to have to open both of them, aren't I? And then what we'll do is push the plunger in on this syringe and slowly pass the helium over the copper into the other syringe. And then we'll do this repeatedly. So I'm going to go back and forth several times to pass the helium over top of the hot copper many times. So you can see as I push this one in, this plunger uh, goes out. Now while I've been heating this, something interesting I've noticed is if I overheat an area, if I leave the burner on one spot for too long, it seems to, to clear up. So watch the area directly above the burner, and if I leave the heat there and don't move it, that copper oxide actually turns back into regular copper. And now I'll pass the helium over top of that section, and as I push the helium through, you can see it darkens again. I apologize for the wobbling. I'm kind of trying to do three things at once here. So that suggests to me that if you overheat this stuff, the copper oxide uh, decomposes and turns back into copper. Well, after probably eight or nine minutes of heating the copper and passing the helium back and forth, I decided to call it. Uh, we've went down to about 30 milliliters of gas, you can see. This is all still hot, so I have to wait until it cools down to get the final volume, since, of course, gases expand when they're heated. But um, I think overall this was a pretty decent run. You can see we've got the 30 left, and then if you take a look at the copper, I mean, that's clearly pretty oxidized. Another reason I decided to call it was this particular spot right here is a bit brighter. That's a spot that I heated to decomposition and turned it back to bright copper. And then I watched that as I kept heating the adjacent areas, and that spot never uh, turned back it never tarnished again. Uh, so that kind of indicates to me that there's not really a lot of oxygen left in the system. And I think the continuously decreasing volume I was reading over here is just due to leaks. You know, like I said, helium is so tiny, I'm sure it slips out at these, particularly these joints, and then probably even past uh, the plunger out the other side. Well, after cooling down, closing the stopcock, and separating everything from the rest of the apparatus, looks like we ended up with 30 milliliters of helium. Now, what that tells me is that since we started with 50 milliliters and we ended with 30, the copper must have absorbed 20 milliliters of oxygen, meaning it's a 40% concentration of oxygen. Now, <laughs> that seems pretty high, so I'm pretty sure there was some error in this experiment, and I, I bet this thing leaks like crazy with helium. I mean, it seems pretty airtight with air, but helium being so tiny, I, I think it's going to be really difficult to seal this thing completely. But, I mean, if you have any suggestions on a way to make this apparatus a little bit better for, for use in helium, definitely let me know in the comments. So this gas should now be free from oxygen, and it's uh, relatively pure helium ready for ampulling. And of course, when you ampule this, you'd want to have the ampule upside down 
and you know tilt this thing up and, and d dispense the helium upward. Uh, ampulling samples is, is kind of important for element collections so I think I'm gonna make a separate video on that because there's some intricacies to it that would just make this video very very long. Anyways there you have it. Uh, leave your comments and suggestions about my apparatus below and I'd, I'd love to see them and you know maybe revisit this in the future. So thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.